Hi there, welcome back to Girl Games Wow. This is Sylvana, and let's pick back up quest to where we were. So, you can see the little bit of blue over there. Unfortunately, you can't just take a left and go to it. You have to go up this hill a little bit and come back down into it. But, other than that, it's not a big deal. So you just go up this road right here a little. Then you can either cut across the hill or, or I should say skirt close to the hill. You have to go up quite a little bit here. And you'll see it kind of split off. So you want to take that. Alright, so we got to kill 12 stone splitter shrogs and stone 8 stone tooth. Alright, so they'll be in this area and we'll just run around, find them, and kill them. So, okay, so you see on this one. This spiked dragon around his name. That means he's a boss or a rare. There's a possibility that even though we just killed him, we will get a quest later to come back and specifically kill him. But you can see it gave us a lot of experience. It dropped a lot of gear. So let's see what it did drop. It dropped some linen cloth, which we need for our craft. And it dropped an armor piece, which is crappy for us. So that's okay. Now, I noticed when I was logging in, there was quite a few people down in that little start building we just came from. You see a couple here in front of us. So, it looks like we're going to run into everyone's favorite issue. Multiple people trying to do the same quest that not being in a group together. So you're going to start fighting other players for, for your um, for your items. It shouldn't be this early in the game that big of a deal. Hmm. Blue light is over me, but the guy that I killed didn't count for oh, I took the wrong path. Either one. So this time I'm just gonna pay a little bit more attention. Okay, he's a bone snapper, which is not on either of our lists. But, he, okay, they drop the two. And this is another little mechanic that you didn't get to see earlier in the, the game when we had a drop quest. Everything we killed that should drop that item did. This is how they really work. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. And you can't ever tell which it's going to be. You also notice that they respawn quite quickly. So we're not having to go far to balance between these two dudes to pick up what we want. Again, just take your time. If you're pretty sure you can handle more than one at a time, maybe pull a couple 
but I personally wouldn't advise that just again I'd rather be safe and kill one or two and it take a couple extra minutes than running through here and pulling a group of them on me and be completely unable to survive that. Now bonus with the fact that we went heels on the monk is if we do get where maybe we're fighting one or two and then some more spawn nearby us and they pull and that can happen is we can switch our spec over to healing and heal ourselves just don't forget if you do do so to flip it back to your damage so that you can fight they so you can fight them so just run around and kill them and there's not much else to be said about that except for that and we already talked about the fact that we're going to do the props. Okay, now I know we will get another quest when we turn these ones in to come back and kill this guy right here. I'm almost sure that we will. Oh! Okay. He knocked me off the edge. That can happen. So I'm just going to let him alone. He, I don't believe, will follow us down here. And if he does, it's not that big of a deal. Be aware of that when you're fighting in certain areas that... He did follow me down. Huh? Well, it changed his mechanics. He will follow you down. He used to not. If he knocked you off that edge and you started to go back towards the entrance, he would pop off of you and you could go back up later and try and kill him. If you if you were on that quest, and or you could just leave. If you weren't, and you know no harms no fouls, so we're gonna learn some new stuff. I have not made new character since before the drop of Mists of Pandaria. The last few new characters I made were all when it was still Cataclysm. So, <clears throat> as we go through these, I, I have a feeling we're going to pick up a quest or two that, used, that was never here before, or I'm going to be expecting to get a quest that isn't here anymore because things have changed in the world since Cataclysm. And that's another reason why I'm making this is even if you've played World of Warcraft before and it's been, say, a few years, four or five years, and you're getting ready, especially to start a brand new character instead of pick up your character, maybe uh, the character you had has been deleted because when you quit, you deleted your character thinking that you would never play again and or something like that. Where are you? 
So if you're getting ready to make a brand new character, even if you've played and then you went away and now you're coming back so you know the general mechanics of the game, there are still going to be things that are new to you in the start zones. Because each time an expansion drops, it changes the world a little bit. Mists of Pandaria, which was the last one before Warlords, was the one that had the less, the least impact on the main overworlds, especially the starting areas of all of the expansions. Uh, uh, Warlords didn't really have any effect on the start zones of the characters because these are the, um, those quests run for very high levels in a totally different part either of the world or in time depending on which expansion you're talking about there. Uh, Mists of Pandaria it's a totally different continent. Here, I'll uh, pull up my map real quick. We'll go overall. So when you start, you can start on this country or this country. This is the Eastern Kingdoms, and this is Kalimador. Dwarf, no human, start here. Night Elf, draw an eye. Start here. Pandarians start not here. There is an island, and it's not shown on the map, that floats in the sea where the, the Pandarian starts. And then Draenor starts high, high level, and it's back in time. So, you can bounce when you're low level between these two. I tend to stay with the Eastern Kingdoms, but some people like the Kalimador quests better. It's a personal thing. And then, when we get up to... Sixty, we will go to. Oh, what's it called? We will go to Outlands. <laughs> we will go to the Outlands and quest here. And then when we get done with that at about seventy, we will come back to Azeroth and go to Northrend. Then when we get to between 80 and 85, we will go back to between places in Kalimador and places in the Eastern Kingdoms. Then we will go to Pandaria at 90, or no, at 85, sorry, to 90. And then from 90 to 100, You'll have already seen it. It's Draenor. It's another planet. So, what Draenor is, is the same planet as Outlands, only back in time. So, it can get quite confusing. As a new player, of where are you, where are you supposed to be, where can you go, where can you not go, how do you get to places. And, and they killed all these dudes. <laughs> when you're questing, where other people are questing, this, is, this becomes the problem. So... Just be patient. Some quests will take you longer than others, if especially if 
There seems to be a multitude of people doing it. You know, check out any little paths and stuff that you might see. Because you never know, there may be what you need hiding up in that path. Also, look where the blue's at. You don't want to go outside of the blue. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing with that bush. All right. Sevens. Oh, here's one. Hey, buddy. Come here. For the most part, you know, I'll, I'll make sure you guys know where we're going and I'll explain the reasons why we are going to go where we go when we go there. Right now we're just following where the quest sends us. The start zone for gnomes directly sends you into Dun Morgo, which is the first main area of the game. And that leads you directly in to Lock Modin, which is where we're at now. Now, if you were a human and you started in the human start area, you would end up doing all of um, damn, Owen Forest, which is the area right outside of Stormwind, and that would lead you directly into Westfall. So, for us, Lochmodin is the equivalent of Westfall. We need one more of these guys, then we can go turn in. And there it looks, I see one. Drawn eyes start on, a, on an island. Hey, and we level it. Ha! Okay. So it looks like you could go directly over there to turn it in. I've tried. It's difficult to find a path. So it's, while not necessarily quicker, it's easier to walk around to turn it in. Sometimes you have to make that sacrifice because there's not a direct path between you and where you need to go because of the mountains. But anyways, since we're talking about zones, Drawn Eyes start on an island. I, am, I believe it's called Azure Mist. Yeah. And then you finish that and it leads you to a second island, which is Blood Mist. And then when you're done with that, it leads you over onto the main continent of Kalimdor. If you're a night elf, you start out, oh, I always forget the name of that area. It's by Darnassus. It's also a little island. And you do all of the, almost all of those quests before you actually would get to Darnassus. Now you get quests early in the game, like we got one when we first hit Karnos to fly Iron Forge. You get one like that to send you to your main city pretty right away. But if you're just walking, you would do all the quests first. So let's see, we got some shoes we can't wear. Pants that are the same. 
and a staff that's better. So we will take staff, accept the quest, and of course we're going to immediately equip that staff. Okay, we got this guy. Turn in his quest. We got this guy. He wants us to kill uh, Spawn Sinner, Shaman, and Bone Snappers. Now, you notice when we were in the cave, we were seeing quite a few of those guys. So, again, you turn around, you go back to that area where we were, and <laughs> oh, look, it's randomly raining. you kill the dudes in the in the cave so i think although it'll be in this episode will be a little longer that we are going to go on this tune and for today's episode until we hit about half to three quarters of the way through 14 to try and put our level number equal with the episode number. It's getting to the time now where that's not going to be possible. The quests just take so much time and I really don't want to bore you guys with an hour long video you know I'd rather break it up into two or three episodes but we're still early enough in the game even though we're at rest again and we ran out of rest pretty quick. Yeah, fudge. See, this is what I mean by you get to fighting for what you need. He was going to lose that foot, foot race, so he used his rollout to beat me to it. And that's fine. You'll see people who do that. There's plenty of things to kill. You don't need to to act that way. I mean, he wasn't rude, but it was still something. You know, and I guess I landed by the jump in front of him. So, or her. They could equally say, well... I cheated by jumping in front of him. Not that I seen him down there. But really, you know, you'll get the quests done. Again, you'll notice that it takes you much less time than these episodes are taking to do these quests. Because you're not sitting there to explaining everything you're doing to people. So just find them, kill them. Apparently some random paladin decided I needed a hand. And I'm going to have to wait for him to respawn. Because the paladin killed him, and it didn't look like he even looted him. Okay, so while we wait for this guy to respawn, random rant. <laughs> I hate that. He beat me to the boss, fair and square. Okay, fine. No problem. However, if you're going to kill something, loot it. Seriously, loot the damn thing. What? Why are you killing it? Come on, guy. We spawn already. 
this time I'm trying to stand in a place where if he knocks me back, he's going to knock me back onto that walkway and not all the way down. Oh my good gravy, this guy will not respawn already. The minute I decide what we're going to do with this, he wants to take forever to spawn. And I am a little more sensitive to the time this stuff takes only because I'm recording. Usually when it comes to this game, I'm pretty patient. It doesn't bother me, you know, unless I, you know, have some kind of other thing I had plans to do. You know, I don't care how long it takes to run a dungeon or a raid. And you'll find that in, that, game, that in this game, you'll find there are people who, it's, it's all about the time. You know, there's a set amount of time they think an activity should take. And if you take longer to do that activity, then they'll get upset. They'll, they'll boot you out of the group or they'll leave the group because you're not moving what in their estimation is fast enough. And there are certain fights where there's a timer on the battle. You have to kill the boss in a certain amount of time or it's called a raid timer because it most often happens in raids although not always the timer will go off and when it does it instantly kills every single person in the group so in an instance like that then I can understand being concerned about how long it's taking to kill that creature. But in general, we're just wa wandering around questing, or it's a normal dungeon boss where it doesn't have a timer like that. Who cares if it takes you 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes to kill the boss? You got it done. You know, unless, like, you have to go to bed or to work or something within, you know, so long of logging in. You know, and then if you have a time restraint like that where you only have an hour, to play let's say then if you're gonna run a dungeon then make sure either you've met some friends online you're in a guild online or you have friends that you know outside of the game that also play who understand that you have a time restraint and who are knowledgeable enough of whatever it is you're running to do it a bit more quickly than a pug and what and since we're talking about that what a pug group is is it's a pickup group it's a group of people you don't know that you just randomly picked up and you picked them up either from the finder or from trade chat in a major city. Nothing wrong with pugs. But that way if you hear somebody talk about, oh, it was a pug group, you know what they're talking about. You know, if you we'll we'll use for example during Halloween. Leading up to Halloween, there is a special dungeon 
that you can get into if you're on the right level where you fight the Headless Horseman. It is not your normal dungeon. It's one, I'll call it a room, for lack of better terminology of what to call it. It's just one open space. There's no extra monsters between you and the boss. You walk up, you click the pumpkin, the pumpkin makes the Headless Horseman come, you fight him, he dies, you get your treasure, you go on with your day. His mechanics have been the same since I started being high enough level to go in there, which was back in Cataclysm, when the level cap to get inside was 80 and then raised to 85. And then again, when MOP came out, it raised from 85 to 90. So I'm expecting this Halloween for it to be raised from 90 to 100. But the mechanics for that fight will be the same as it always is. And this is something because there's a percentage of a chance that part of the loot he drops is a specialty mount that you cannot get any other way. But through that drop, people will have multiple tunes. That's called an alt. And because this is a pretty straightforward fight, the mechanics of it never change. It's always the same system, and it has been for many, many, many years. This is a dungeon people fly through. They don't ask you if you know what you're doing, because they just expect you to know what you're doing. Because it's... In the realm of dungeons, except for how high the character is, I'd say it's the easiest dungeon to run because it's one room. You can't get lost. You can't get turned around. You lock in, walk up, and do it. Can't wear it. Two green pluses. And we'll take the belt. Except, so where'd the belt go? I think that's our belt. Yep. Okay, and we'll turn this quest in. Boots, no, can't wear it, no. We lose stem for intel. <sighs> no. So, level 12, level 12, level 12, none of that matters. Uh, I'm going to end up disenchanting that, so it doesn't really matter to me what it is. Okay. So, onward to the next quest. So, that's one of those dungeons where people will get very angry at you if you're, if you're slow. There's other ones that are very complicated. Uh, I want to say it's called Old Bar, but that's a raid. That one's complicated too. Um, Old Amon is the dungeon. And it is super. The layout, once you learn the layout of this dungeon, it's not as horrible as it seems, but. It's a very big place. The paths intersect with each other. There's a lot of dead ends. It looks very similar throughout. It's incre If you don't know where you're going, it's incredibly difficult to know where you are, where you're going. So, that's one where 
unless you're in a pub group with people who have ran this a whole bunch, where this one t that one tends to, to go a little slower because you have to keep stopping and looking at your map. And we're going to pop over here because I happen to see it. See the little green exclamation mark? That means flight point. Go pick it up. I wish Blizz would make their mind up about that. You can have them all. You can't. You gotta go pick them up. Well, it's a segue. Well, it wasn't something that I was thinking about talking about, but I will. When I started playing this, which was the very tail end of Lich King, very beginning of Kata. Did I take the wrong app? I mentioned it. I've got myself all turned around now. <laughs> I do that. Okay. Let's try this again. Um, you had to go around the world and pick up the flight points. That's that's how it was. You couldn't fly there if you hadn't physically walked or rode your horse or f flown your own mouth to wherever and picked up that flight point. You couldn't take public transportation to just fly there. Okay, we definitely want to go here into the inn. We want to first stop at the innkeeper and make this our inn. So when we hearth, this will be where we come back to. Then the other thing we want to do, ah, uh, you have a good quest, you're going to be a jerk, is just pick any vendor in here that you want. It doesn't matter who, she'll do. And I think we can sell those. Those are cooking. going to disenchant that. Sell that crap, it's gray. That cloak is no good. That belt is no good. Pot, that's great. We're gonna disenchant that. Don't need that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now, I've sold something I didn't want to. So you notice there's two tabs here. So we'll want to click buy back. Go to the item that we accidentally, I accidentally sold I didn't want to. Right click it, it'll buy it back. Click back to merchant so you can continue selling the stuff that you do want. I'm going to move that. Okay, now sell that. That's crap. 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 Okay, again, I'm going to disenchant that. So we're going to move it. That's crap. Again, it's crap, but we're going to disenchant it. So there you go. Okay, so we picked up these quests. We got our bags empty again. We're going to go out of the inn and pick up the other quests. We'll go over here. Okay, here's the quest here. And then there's one, I think it's in this building. That's why I kept looking in the building. That's because I'm pretty sure there's one that's in a building. Uh, but I get turned around around which building it's in, no? Still not in the right spot. This goes to show you, you don't always know where it's at. Take it, if you keep looking, you'll find it.
So I'm going to go up. I'm going to do this the hard way. But I'm going to find this quest. Up this hill. Okay. Now I am right on top of that exclamation mark. But obviously, there's no person here. So let's go back down towards town. Yeah, let's get stuck behind. Okay, so here's the building. Guys, not outside. Go in. And there he is. Okay. There we go. Alright, now we've got all the quests picked up. Like a middle midget. Alright, so we'll sit here, we'll grab the map, we'll see what we got. Okay, we've got one dude up the hill, and the rest of it's kind of down towards this question mark. Alright, so this is the one we're going to go for, is number two. Alright, so the gold arrow will help you some. So use it to your advantage. Go up out of the town. And towards the hills. Uh, you'll notice we picked up some quests here that have spiders and stuff in them. So if you run into a spider, just go ahead and kill it. So I was telling you about flight points, sorry. Okay, so then it changed to when you first got the game. And I believe this was part of the way through Kata maybe into Mists of Pandaria, you automatically got all the major flight points. Now, in a way, this was really good. Because if you needed to go somewhere for a quest or, and for me, this is more of what I used it for, you needed to go somewhere to meet up with some friends or some guild mates to do something, you could just grab the flight point. And go. No having to have been there before, just, you know, get it and hit it. Well, a lot of people complain about that because by having the flight points given to you. It was no longer really a requirement to explore. Now that was magical, you guys. We just ran <laughs> into, I believe this is the dude that we just killed for the quest. If not, he's definitely a rare. So, <laughs> you never can tell what's going to happen on this damn game. That's <laughs> why I love it, guys. So, anyways, people complain about that because by getting the flight points given to you, it kind of killed the need to go explore areas. 
you no longer had to go and look around and find blah blah this flight point or that flight point because you automatically had it. And you know, a big part of the game mechanic is or at least of the entertainment of the game is wandering around the world and finding out where stuff is. So since it was met with such virulent backlash, Blizz flipped it back to you have to go find the flight points. And now I, I can't tell if it's because I already have characters and that's why I know where some are or if it's what they're doing with it now. But I noticed when I went to hit the flight point to go to Iron Forge when we got the quest in Karnos to do it that I had the flight point for Stormwind. And I've never went on this character and picked up the flight point for Stormwind. Now we've taken the character into Stormwind. So maybe just by being in the city, we picked it up. But we have it, and I don't know how we got it. All right, so we're about not quite halfway into 14. We're going to go ahead, go over here put ourselves in the inn so we can get some rest. Next time on Girl Games Wow, we'll hit 15 and then when we do so, I'll make two of the episodes for the dungeons. So when we go from episode 15 being level 15, when we come back from episode 16 of the actual gameplay through, we're probably going to be level 16 or 17-ish. And there's a possibility maybe even 18 because of the dungeons. Again, uh, comment below anything you want to see. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a very nice day.